I want to start with those students who are already a part of DIY Guru because that uh, those are our main priority, of course. And I can see that we have about 37 students present in the session. I don't know how many of you are not a part of DIY Guru and are just here from Altair. If you are from Altair DIY Guru free session and you're still attending the technical sessions, then it's nice. It shows that you guys are serious. However, I expect mo most of you to be from the nano degree course itself, right? So first I'll just uh, share some important update for those students. So for students who have started working in October and November, I understand that some students from November batch might be feeling a bit confused that how are things going on? What is the tentative <clears throat> timeline and the process we follow? So don't worry. It's a long course. You are going to spend at least six to seven months. That is minimum six to seven months. Even if you are very intelligent, then also I'm sure you have to spend at least six, seven months mm -hmm. to complete the whole program. So uh, do not worry if you are confused for the next one week or maybe three, four days. Things do take time. Bigger the course is, larger the curriculum is, more time it takes to get the understanding and comfortness. So there are some confusions among students. How are things uh, going to start and all for the November batch, guys? So as we have told you in the induction program, now if you do not, if you did not attend the induction program, then it's, I don't think it's our mistake, right? I mean, the, you should have attended the induction program. But if you have not attended, just to brief things a little, uh, we'll be having weekly technical sessions like this in which one of our mentors, like today, I think Siddharth and Supratim are sharing something. They will give a technical talk. Then we have the project update session. But the projects for October and November batch students will start from December or January first week. Or maybe December as well, depending how well you guys are doing and if our mentors think that you guys are ready. Once you start your projects, then you will be assigned a mentor. Because of course, you need your mentor for your project and practical work for your uh, lecture related queries you can directly ask after the technical session during the doubt round uh, during the doubt session which we have after this technical talk <clears throat> so we provide you the mentor after the after you start working on your projects other than this i think uh, in the last session uh, instructor Ame, sir he shared the tentative order of classes and the courses you should be working on. Maybe I'll just share this with you again. Uh, so Amesa shared me a message that, OK, this is the ideal way of uh, going through the courses. So for new students who are not aware of how you can work with the courses, in which order you should be working with the courses, this order should be idol which i just sent you with a chat so new students can follow this uh, order and you can start working on your lectures and then for the next one or two months you focus on your lecture part go through as many books and internet research you can go uh, you, you can work with if you have doubts regarding any content or regarding any research paper you find or any textbook question then you're always welcome to ask that question in the query session or you can message me or in the group and then we will talk to you personally over slack email or whatsapp or can he even have a separate session with you guys depending if you're having questions if not then you will continue working like this your lectures weekly sessions some assignments and your self studies and by december then we will start your project so this is something that should be enough for the new students because it is important for us that you understand the previous the uh, fundamentals before starting with the project work otherwise it will be too difficult for you so it would be like you're not having enough information but still you're trying to work with the project that is not good scenarios so that's why we want you guys to focus on your content and your self-study till december at least for next one month Similarly, for students who will join in December batch, they will have the projects from January end and so on. Then you, you guys are already comfortable. I think this can be a perfect start for you. 
for those students who are already working with DIY Guru Nano Degree program and are from previous batches, there is very important update that now we are going to start working with the project phase two. So, uh, Siddharth, I don't think the details regarding the projects have been finalized yet, right? So, not yet, right? Yeah, we have to decide regarding that. Okay. We'll so maybe we'll figure out who those are active and then we'll correct. just make a team and then. So we will follow the same process, guys, like we followed the last time. So now from Monday onward, we will finalize the project phase two on which you guys will be working on. This will be a more complex project, a more difficult one. And this should be something which we think is kind of new. And most of the people in the market, in the industry are not aware of or do not have the experience with these project ideas. So these projects will be something which will really define your profile and will really define what level of work you guys have done. So we will again come up with three to four major projects. I expected that you guys complete at least two minor projects, but there is no one in the session who came to me and said, sir, I've completed my project before time and now I want to work on the second one. But that's fine. Uh, you guys can start working on the major project provided your names are forwarded by the mentors. So I got a message today or maybe yesterday from a student. He said that, sir, one of my team members, uh, most of my team members are not working at all. I can see his name was. Uh... <clears throat> Mm. So basically, Amol, yes, Amol messaged me that his team members are not working and he has to take care of all the tasks on his own. And because of this, he is not able to complete the project. So what I want is that such students must not suffer because of others. So every mentor will provide me the list of students who they think are ready to start working on the major project even if their minor project is not yet complete, but they think that they are trying hard and the delay is because of some other team members, but not because of those students, then also the mentors can recommend their names for their major projects. So I think this is a request to all three mentors, Balraj, Supratim and Siddhar, that provide me the names of those team members whom you think are ready to start working on the major project. Those students who did not perform well or are not active during the minor project shall not be allowed to work on the major project part. And therefore, you shall receive the certificate of nano degree if you are completed with your lecture content, but you will only start receiving the placement support and the career counseling once you are technically ready. And you will be technically ready only if you complete the minor and major project. This discussion we had around two months before when we started working on this idea of project part, right? <clears throat> so this is something which we have already talked about that you guys should be technical fit. I mean, you cannot expect that you complete six month lecture and then you will get a very good job in a very good company. In that case, everyone in India would be having an electric vehicle job. I mean, this makes no sense at all. The best, the one thing Indians are good at is doing the lectures. Every student in every city, in every house is doing some sort of online course or lectures. That does not mean that everyone is getting placed. The difference is basically the practical exposure. You guys want to work in the workshops. Even if you are not ready to work with the major project, how can I ask you to directly work on the mechanical parts? For that, then we would need another in instructor who will teach you the mechanical part. I mean, what is the sense of teaching you the mechanical part and the practical work if you're not ready to do it on your own? This will only make you feel good, but will not help you to get uh, to be more employable and in your, nor it will help you to get more knowledge. So I think <clears throat> this decision is kind of important and very, very necessary in terms of professional behavior that uh, you guys must be eligible to work on the major projects and then you will be uh, your names will be forwarded for the placement. So as soon as you start working on the major project, your names shall be forwarded to our uh, partner industries 
and are uh, connected HRs of different companies and startups for your placements. And if you are not recommended by your mentor that, okay, this student should not work on major project, then you have to work hard and you have to be in that list unless the, until then you shall not be recommended. That's quite clear. And we already had the discuss, uh, discussion way back in August or September, I guess. Uh, I know if this sounds tough for you guys, I want it to be tough. We uh, never said that uh, being completing the nano degree program for DIY Guru would be a cakewalk because if it is so easy, then what is the point of doing nano degree? You all have paid your money, right? You all are paying for these classes. So we must ensure that we meet the industry standards. And to meet that, I want every one of you to be very, very fit in terms of technical and communicational aspects. And that is why we have the presentation update. <clears throat> if you have more queries, we can have another session on Wednesday. Maybe I'm going to have another session for the new potential students. You can join that and we can have more discussion. I don't want to take more time because this session would else be very long. Okay, so mentors, please provide me the names of those students whom you think are ready. Even if they have not completed their project, but you think they're hardworking, do recommend their names. It depends on your connection and your observation and the great sheet you have been following so far. So provide me the names by today evening or tomorrow morning. And then we start with the placement path support for those students and we start with the uh, major project groups with those students only. And if one student completes the minor one and is ready to work with the major project, then he or she will start working on the major project as a new team. Even if you are doing the major project, guys, do think, uh, do remember that completing just one minor, one major is not something very unique. You guys should focus more than this. Try to finish all four minor and all four major by the end of your nano degree. So basically, when you are done with your minor and major, you are already aware of how things work. Go back to the minor projects from other teams. Ask me, I will give you that content that project proposal work on the other minor projects also because when you will go for the interview of course you want your profile to be full of full, full of uh, projects and experience right so this is the best chance to may make those uh, experiences and to get that practical projects in your cv so i think if you're not working on your cv if you're not working on projects are you actually looking for job this is the question then you guys should ask yourself so just don't restrict yourself to one project of minor and major aim for more and try to achieve as many projects as you can. DIY Guru can offer you four, eight projects, four minor, four major. I think this is more than enough for anyone. Once you complete these projects, I don't think you need anyone's support for the placement. You will automatically build enough connections to decide your own career path. Then we have students from the Altair DIY Guru free courses. Uh, you guys must complete your uh, lecture content by today evening now, because from tomorrow, tomorrow you will get the project which you will be working on on the the the, the free core project you'll be working on as a part of your uh, course you selected whether it is from solid work or matlab matlab simulink uh, the thermal one or from the data analytics some videos of pandas are yet to be uploaded i said it will be done today yesterday i said it i'm sorry i will do it now during the session and uh, tomorrow you will get more information on this I know nano degree students might think that, okay, we have to do all tire one also, the DIY guru all tire one also, and nano degree also. It might be tough and hectic for you guys. And that is what I want. I want things hectic, hectic to, for, for you, because that is what my aim is. The more pressure you guys will bear during the nano degree program, the more comfortable you will be during your job as employees, right? So I want you to feel that pressure, try to work in, a, in such pressure situation. And trust me, this will help you all to be a, much better professional in future. If you think that the entire courses are affecting your ongoing nano degree program, take a pause from the entire one. You guys have no restriction on the 21 day program. As I told you for nano degree student, there is no restriction. Focus on your minor and major project first and then complete the entire one. Uh, so, but still try to do as many as you can. I just want to give you plethora of you know, opportunities so that uh, you should be having the confidence that, okay, by the end of these projects and courses, I'm actually a deserving candidate for any job I'm looking for. Any more details, guys, any more questions we will take uh, when you will receive more and more details regarding the projects and all. I just wanted to make you aware how things are going to change from now on. 
if you are not serious yet try to be serious if not then it's your personal decision but we will try to be uh, as good in terms of providing as many opportunities as possible from our side uh, thank you Siddha, for your time maybe now you can start with your presentation i will possibly leave the call now if you have any queries in between just give me a call huh? thank you sure good evening guys can you see my screen yes sir yes sir okay. so i'll just do a recap because the uh, previous session has been followed by this current session so in the previous session we just had done a like we just calculated the forces required resistive forces acting on the vehicle the longitudinal forces like the drag force the road resistance force great force and acceleration force and then we took a vehicle which was a maruti swift 2021 and we uh, took the parameter specifications uh, from the manufacturer we add certain uh, values of coefficients and then uh, i show you how you can design your own drive cycle like uh, the drive mode that time duration initial speed you can add on it and i have also provided you the sheet like how can you also work on this by taking any other vehicle uh, changing drive cycle like change the speed over here duration and you can see what will be the change in the uh, forces acting on it okay and then we evaluated the uh, like I took for certain case I took like this one uh, the acceleration one or the cruising one I took this and I showed you how to calculate the energy consumption okay and then after that I showed you that uh, for the uh, theoretically how you can calculate for each uh, drive mode you calculate the energy consumption of the vehicle in what per kilometer so now this is the uh, for the powertrain of the vehicle we have to uh, deduce the values of the motor parameters like when you go for a market you want to know that how much amount of torque will i be needing okay what will be the kilowatt rating of my motor so in my uh drive cycle i got maximum 135 kilowatt so i for a speed of 33 kilometer 33 meter per second that was my opt or 30 30 meter per second so now uh, I'll just now in this session I'll talk about like first of all like uh, by the power parameters how can I now introduce the battery parameters how can I uh, just calculate how to calculate my battery pack and then how I'll tell you that how can I fit the dimensions of battery cells which I've uh, formulated in forms of series and parallel and how will I fix that battery in my uh, vehicle which is an existing uh, petrol engine vehicle okay so first of all uh, whenever you, when we talk about any four wheeler so we should know before having calculated the battery rating we should know its energy consumption okay so uh, I have created a MATLAB module is it visible yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so this is just simple one uh, okay this collects all the calculation which I've done I have the low resistance force the great force acceleration force and drag force and I've given drive cycle of WLTP class 3 uh, this is the you can see the max which is going is around 36 I guess 36 somewhere 36 meter per second okay so I'm getting a maximum velocity of 36 meter per second and that too will be in kilometer per hour will be around 130 130 kilometer per hour okay and then the same values which i have taken in the excel sheet okay for the mass and the uh, cr and the frontal area the drag coefficient okay that all same taken over here and you can see that we got the same 3859 newton for the great force uh, resistance force which was same over here the acceleration force will change okay and what i did was uh in this drive cycle sorry You can see uh, the acceleration is decreased, like the vehicle decelerates, then accelerates, decelerates, then accelerates. Okay. So when the vehicle is accelerating, so at that moment, the vehicle is resisting some force on it. But when it is uh, decelerating, so there should be no amount of force acting on the vehicle as a resistance force. So we have to make sure that when we calculate this, 
uh, on the acceleration part when the axial acceleration is negative. So uh, no force should contribute to the traction force. So that's why I added a saturation. In the saturation, you can see its lower limit is zero and upper limit is positive, which means that whenever this is uh, in the range of zero to positive, so that way my signal will be trans transferred over here. So we have to make sure for that. Now, similarly, I designed the hold. I calculated the speed which I got over here. I applied an integrator. Integrator because when you know that this uh, velocity is your distance upon time. So if I integrate this, so I'll get my distance. So I got distance in kilometer of uh, the whole overall duration of the cycle was 1800 seconds. So in that duration, with the speed graph uh, shown over here, that distance was covered in 23.26. And then I got my traction force. I use uh, the top figure to calculate over here. I got the power. So for this, the kilowatt rating was showing around, was I can say around 178 somewhere. Okay, because earlier what I did in the Excel sheet was 30 meter per second. So uh, for that, for that, uh, what happened? Uh, when you talk about this in 30 meter per second, this I'll just show you. When I talked about 30 meter per second, final speed. Okay. So here is this speed is 30 meter per second. So I got 135 kilowatt. But here my drive cycle is around, uh, this reference speed is around uh, 36 meter per second. So I'm getting my kilowatt rating max is around 178 kilowatt. So that's why there's a difference over here. And then when I use this, I added an integrator module so that I get the energy. And then I divided by energy consumption in water, divided by the uh, kilometer travel over here. Okay. So this is the whole duration of that, the energy that generated while traveling this whole drive cycle. Okay. Divided by the kilometers traveled. Okay. So this showed me watt hour per kilometer. So it shows me that 123.8 watt hours is required energy for moving a vehicle up to one kilometer. Remember, whenever you design the vehicle, you should have this value, okay? So I can just take this around 124 watt hour per kilometer, which shows that whenever you design, if I'm taking this vehicle and I want this vehicle to travel distance of one kilometer, the minimum energy requirement for this is 124 watt hour, okay? So from this, I got the value of, uh, you can, even you can just uh, take any vehicle of your choice if you're designing a if it's a bar vehicle or you having, if you want to change your uh, home house formula, just change the values over here. Uh, selected reference drive cycle from this and see what amount of uh, energy consumption that will be take place. Okay. So this energy consumption is similar to what we have in our Indian market of petrol vehicles, kilometer per liter. Okay. It shows that uh, in per liter, how much kilometer the vehicle can travel. Similarly in this we have in per watt hour of charge, okay? How much kilometer the battery will travel. So now, I'll just now start with the sheet over here. Okay. Now, first of all, we talk about, let's write energy consumption, okay? I'm just showing you how you can start with having a own energy consumption. Then, Range required. Then I have battery depth of this charge. I have battery. Sorry, battery voltage. And then I have battery rating. Rating. So now, what I got my energy consumption is 124. I'll write the units over here. Watt hour per kilometer. Okay. Now range required. Okay. So, uh, as you know, the standard ranges that we have, we talk about Tata Nixon, we have a 312 kilometer. 
okay and when we go about so the average uh, range which we get in the city travel is around 250 or sometimes uh, the customers have got 200 km but for my i just take the range required as 250 km okay 250 km and i'll take battery of depth of discharge as well so what is depth of discharge it is uh, in lithium ion cells the charge is not always at 100 percent there's some amount of uh, like uh, loss over there that is called depth of discharge like uh, you, your cell doesn't get discharged from 100 to 0 percent it has like it starts from it has some 85 percent of charge is usable and that left and that uh, 15 or 10 percent is not usable that is never used in your battery okay so sometimes people start uh, uh, without taking this factor they design the battery and they get their low range so they just say that they, the battery is not perfect but the thing is we have to always make sure that we design the battery when you want this amount of range okay so you have to make sure that we take the battery of data discharge as well okay so now for the battery voltage okay so battery voltage so i'll take a 320 voltage over here which is standard which is used by even mahindra e verito tata nexon and tata battery which are using they're using 320 volt so i'm just going to use the same as well for standard reasons okay i'm not going to go with 230 volt 240 volts there's a 320 volt which is uh now now what using over here now the battery rating okay so what will happen is over here is i'll just it will be like equals to 124 your what energy consumption into the range that required 250 into sorry they will be divided by 0.85 okay so when i go over this it gives me around this 36.470 or i can even just do this that i can just make it a kilowatt okay this is my watt so i'll just divide by thousand so you'll be thinking some of may have a question that uh when you're talking about swift so swift is you're showing that a battery rating of 36.4 but if we go with tata nexon tata nexon has a battery rating of 30 kilowatt and it's an stv it has more parameters like in weight in terms of speed and it has a range of 312 kilometer the thing is the test which we done on the 312 is a standard cycle right like for example the arif ari figures which we show in the mileage that is when the vehicle is driving at constant speed, constant speed throughout, okay, uh, at constant RPM, at the RPM where the torque, maximum torque uh, figure never reaches at that point. For example, if I talk about a diesel vehicle, so when you drive a diesel vehicle at around 1700 or 1500 RPM, so you get your maximum mileage over there. But talk about a petrol vehicle, when you drive around 2000 RPM, so at that point you get your maximum uh, fuel efficiency. Similarly, when your motor is operating at such RPM, at a constant speed, and there's no acceleration deceleration, so you get your maximum amount of less energy consumption and maximum range. But similarly, when you talk about uh, the user reviews, when you ask the customer, he'll be getting a range of 200 to 250 kilometers in the city. Because the drive cycle, which now it is used, it has deceleration, then acceleration, then a constant speed, cruising, hill climb, that all includes. That's why I've taken some losses. Even though I can also, uh, like in a practical, practical, this my range can be increased. It might be reached 300. But for my drive cycle, which I have taken, it shows that I have an energy consumption of 124 uh, watt per kilometer. Okay. This is what uh, you can design your batch. This is your requirement of battery rating. Now, I'll take about the cell specifications. Okay. So I'll just take two cells over here. One is the Panasonic 18650. Yeah, I'll just use this. This is a cylindrical cell. And one I'll be using is the Kokum 26H pouch cell. Okay, these two cells I'll be taking.
course will be the mass of the cell just okay i'll just write the parameters are required volume then the bad battery rating then i have volume energy density then i have gravitational energy dense i'll just write this till here then i have the battery so this will be my battery rating this will be my cell rating now this will be the parameter will be number of cells in series number of cells in parallel okay now one more thing i'll do is i'll just have the back chip battery back rating then I have the voltage of pack. Then I have the current rating. Then I have mass of pack. Then I have volume of pack. Okay, so now I'll start filling. Uh, this is standard. I've taken two cells. One is Panasonic 18650 cylindrical, and the other is Coker a pouch cell of 26 EH. Okay, so first of all, the mass of this is around this all will be in. I'll just write the units over here standard units kg. I'll be using all the SI units over here. Okay, so this will be in. This has a 4.85. Okay. The cocum is of is of 0 0.317. So 300 grams. Oh sorry, it is around 387. So you can see the cocum cell is uh, heavier as compared to cylindrical cell over here. Talk about the volume. So the volume of the cell is actually first of all it is by into 0.25 into so first of all the diameter so diameter is actually the uh when you talk about this cell so cylindrical cell has this that the first two letters denotes the uh diameter of the cell okay so for the uh this panasonic is 18.3 into 18.3 into and then we have 65 is the length or the height of the cell okay so 65.3. Sorry, this is 80. I'll just write the actual value. And it is around 1. 1.17. Cross ten to the power minus five. Okay. Talk about this. This is around one point seven one cross ten to the power around two point one five cross ten to the power. Okay, 
Arabian, the thing is that 18 point YTB took 18.5, not 18. Okay. So uh the man the 18 uh is the denotion that 18 mm is the uh cell rating, but the actual is what we get is 18.5. Okay, if we not take that 0.5 mm, okay, and we just calculate the whole with the 18 mm approximation. So when you deal with cells of uh when you talk about the cells when using the formula. So the number of cells used in around is 2000 to 3000. So if I don't calculate that 0.5 mm, I am taking this only symbol and not I'm um, talking about the, I'm not taking the 0.5 mm, I'm just taking it as in 0 mm. I'm just rounding off it. So that 0.5 mm will affect my space when I calculate the whole volume of the battery pack. You can understand because if you, uh, if I multiply the 0.5 into 2000, okay. So even uh, there's a difference of like 1000 mm, or I can say the one meter space will be like over there. That's why we have to focus on that when we talk about uh, when I just uh, what values I'm writing over here. These are taken from the manufacturer's website. So I have to be very sure with that the values I'm taking calculating, they should be proper. If I'm uh, rounding off anything, so that will be affect my final product. Okay. That's why we have to, yeah. Yeah, if you can give me one minute, you know, I can just share my screen and show them that spec sheet. Or if yes, you have, you yes, can sure. show them. Yeah, just a second. So. Yeah, so the value which, uh, you know, Siddharth is taking maybe. Sir, you're... Hello, sir. Yes, your uh, uh, voice is not audible. Okay. Uh, no, but is my screen visible? Yes, sir. No, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so this is what you know. Siddharth is talking about. So, this is the height and this is the diameter. So. He has taken 18.5, but this is how the technical spec sheet looks like. So if you see all the values are given and then it's a long sheet, but for calculation, you know, we use this. So he has taken for Panasonic. I'm showing you for, uh, you know, the Samsung similarly for Kukum, you know, if you see such values, you will get, you know, once you download the sheets, you know, you will, you will get all the thickness, width, length, weight, everything for the cells. So. For different cells, different spec sheets are available. Now, this is for 2170 cells. Uh, what Siddharth has taken is 18650. So, 18650, though the name is 18650, but if you see, the actual diameter is around 18.4. And uh, and this is for Samsung, maybe for Panasonic, it is 18.5. But this is how, you know, it looks like. So, just wanted to share this because, you know, there was some confusion. So, sorry, Siddharth, you can continue. No, th really, thank you, sir. Really, thank you for yeah. your help. Yeah. So I, I, I hope this clears uh, Arvind's doubt. Arvind? Uh, yes, sir. It's, it's clear now. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You can continue, Sita. So now, uh, the cell rating, okay? So the cell rating is nothing but when you multiply the voltage. Okay, I just add some two more rules over here. I have not added the voltage and current rating. Insert time. So for Panasonic, it is 3.6 volts and for our Kokum, it is 3.7 volts. Okay. I'll just write the unit over here, but as you all are doing the analytics, so I think the units are very predefined to you all. Okay. Now, uh, the cell rating is in 
ampere hour okay so in cylindrical cell it is 3.2 ampere hour in top of panasonic but in our pouch cell we have 26 ampere hour so you can see that uh, how much of like you can see the volume is very less mass is less so the cell rating is also less less over here and in cocoa it is heavier the volume is more it is a meter cube I'll just for those who are not understanding why i've added the point so it is a meter cube okay now the cell rating so it's nothing but voltage into ampere hour okay so when i multiply this i'll be getting a value of 11.52 watts and similarly over here i'll be getting 96.2 so you can see around nine times less, around 8.8 .8 or nine times it is less. Okay. So with having uh, like a heavier battery, more volume, but still I'm getting energy cell rating is high. Now, what is volume energy, energy density? So when I talk about like when I'm planning a battery pack, okay, and I have little space over there, and I have to see that my volume is restricted. So what I think that the energy requirement per meter cube like for one meter cube or very one centimeter one centimeter space i get high amount of energy content from that battery okay so that as my space like for the same battery like i need uh like two kilowatt hour battery pack okay but my space is minimum so i look for that cell or that battery cell that has a high amount of volume energy density okay because i'll just show you how what i'll do i just divide this energy rating this by this okay so when i do this equals to so it is i guess h7 okay h7 divided by and this will be h5 oh sorry h4 h4 Is it showing such thing? We just I'll write the value over here. So my volume density will be so just add a bracket after the equals to, then you'll get the value. Yeah, actually, I did it, I believe, but I don't know what happened. Okay. Just don't worry, I have the values written over here. Water per meter cube. Okay, we're going to talk about over here. Then, the same thing which I get over here is 447.4 kilowatt hour per meter cube. So, you can see uh, what it shows that in that one meter cube space. The energy content I'm getting is 658 kilowatt hour. Okay. And when talk about in Kokum cell, for in that one meter cube space, I get lesser amount of energy rating. That is 447. So uh when I'm a battery manufacturer or I'm designing a battery pack. Basically, I'm just I'll think that this cylindrical cell will be very much more easier for me as I have less space and it's getting me more energy energy content over here now similarly when i talk about gravitation energy density it is nothing but dividing the cell rating watt hour uh, by the mass okay so when i do this so i'm getting uh 237.5 watt hour per kg okay and similarly when i talk about in the this cell so i'm getting is 248 0.57 watt hour per kg okay so this is very near about over here there is no much such it is really near about over here but still uh i can see that cylindrical cell is more prominent as compared to this okay as you can see that the meter in less one meter cube I'm getting more amount of energy content in one kg of uh mass i'm getting more energy content as compared to the cell. Now the battery rating. Okay. 
So the battery rating required over here is, or talk about is 36, RG take is 36.5 kilowatt hour. Okay. Similarly over here, 36.5 kilowatt hour, just required over here. Now, uh, the battery voltage is 320 volt. Okay. So I'll just divide this 320 by the cell voltage over here. Okay. So this will give you. Try I did this earlier. This 320 divided by 3.2 or 3.6. Sorry. Okay. So I'm getting is 88.888, but I'll take this as 88. I'll tell you why. Okay. And similarly over here, what I'm getting is equals to 320 divided by what I'm getting is 3.7, 3 3.7. I'm getting is 86. So I'll take the standard as 86. Okay. So I got my number of cells in series in Panasonic is 88 and I'm getting in Kokum is 86 number of cells in series. Now I'm going to talk about this over here that I do need to know about what is my energy rating required. Okay. So I can just calculate over from here. So let me just wait a minute. This. I need to know about my energy rating. Okay. That is the ampere r so i just divide this 36.4 okay so when i do this 36.4 36 i take standard 36.5 divided by 320 okay let's make this as 36.500 that will give me 114 so i just take this as 114 EH. That's my energy rating. Similarly, what I'll do is I'll just divide this first to 114. Now, uh, what my uh, cell rating, current rating over here is 3.2. Divide this by 3.2. What I get is 35 over here. So I'll take this as 35. Now I talk about this, uh, what I got over here. Similarly, I'll do is I'll write over here equals to the 114 divided by what I got is 26 over here. I got is 4. So I write this as standard 4. This is my cell configuration. That is 88, 35, 86 and 4. I just add one, one of this uh, like row over here. And that will show. Total num number of cells. Okay. Uh, the, Sandeep, what are you asking me? Sorry, I couldn't get you. Sir, could you once say energy rating formula? Energy rating formula. Okay, so that's nothing, but uh, you have to just divide your this. It is nothing, but first of all, you have to take your uh, battery rating. That is your battery capacity, 36,500. Divided by the voltage rating. Okay. Okay. 320. Okay. That will okay. give you 114. So I take a standard as 114. Okay. okay. We call it energy rating because uh, the energy shows the charge rating over here because it is in ampere R. Ampere is nothing but uh, charge with efficient of charge respect to time. So when you uh, integrate that you get charge and charge is energy. So that's what you call as energy rating of cell.
now in uh, total number of cells yeah. when i multiply yeah in simple terms it is p is equal to v times i that is yeah yes sir to put it very simply yeah. now number of cells what i get get over here is 88 into 35 380 now similarly when i talk about over here what i get number of cells is 88 86 into 4 Okay, so we, uh, why I did this because when you, you have number of cells in series and then we create number of cells in parallel. So first, like uh, this example, like uh, these rows which I have, I just talk about over here. I take this four uh, columns. These are in series, and when you connect these two row, they are in uh, connected in parallel. Okay, so I have four in uh, series and two in parallel. So what I when I how number of uh, ta, uh like tabs over I have over here is eight. So four into two eight. Similarly, that's why I multiply these two. That's how I got my number of cells. So you can see that uh, how less amount of cells are required in Cochem cells. Okay, and now the actual battery by creating I'll be getting when I multiply this eighty eight. Okay. Actual battery back rating when I've considered this. Okay, so that will be 88 into the cell voltage of the uh, Panasonic cell. Okay, into 35 into the ampere rating of the cell 3.2. That will give me 35. Point, uh, 35 this this is what i'm getting this is in what are okay now when i do this similarly over here 86 into 3.7 that is my cell voltage and then into 4 into my cell current rating Okay, so I got this over here. So 33. Okay, so I'm getting this. If I even add one more, like if I see that I'm not getting the minimum amount of requirement over here, so I have to modify something. If I can even add one more cell in over here, okay, sorry, just control Z. If I make this as 36, okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so this will become. 36. This is what I can get. So this is approximately 5 over here. Okay. And this will become 36. Now over here, uh, if I change this to 87. Okay. And this will be 87 and this will be 3.7 still i'm getting less amount of value so what i'll do i'll just increase this this will be my five okay and i'll just make sure if i'll just make this as right this is five okay so i have to you have to make this like this because if I make this as 87 or I make this as 85 over here, okay? So I'm not getting uh, much amount of, if I get huge amount of change over here. And why? Because when I just do this, if I made this 88 over here, okay? So my voltage path, voltage will be. So whenever you connected uh, cells in series, okay? The voltage add up, as you know, okay? When I add uh, voltages in series, so my, Voltage will add up when I connect my cells in parallel. So my current rating will add up. Okay. So uh, similarly, when I talk about uh, my cell voltage over here, so that will be the 3.6 into H1. Okay. Similarly over here equals to 3.7 into 87. 
Let's see, this is what I'm getting. If I do this as 86 over here. So now I've got is 320. I can make this as 86 over here. What I'm getting is 86. This is what I'm getting. If I make this as four, okay, to make sure it is near to that value. Just make sure that this goes. I12 and this goes like with this. That's why I have to make this as five to increase that. It will be five. Yeah, I can share the spreadsheet later. Okay. So this is what I'll be getting. So I'll be getting high energy content. Okay. I cannot do manage that because when you work on such sales with having such amount of high ampere R, you'll be getting these problems. Okay. So I'll just talk about the current rating. So why I'm why I'm uh, showing the these two cells because as you can see when you work on similar what I'm doing you'll be facing the such issue that you want this required rating but when you combine the cells you'll be having some problem with the actual battery rating. Now here I'm getting in a in a very pro, ex, uh, exact value. Why? Okay, so this is uh, this cells will change. Okay, because that number of cells and you can change them. So that's why. I'm getting such accurate value, which is very near about over here. But when I'm dealing with cells which having such high amount of uh, ampere capacity, I am having trouble with modifying my required rating to actual battery pack rating. Okay. Now the current rating over here. When I talk about the current rating, it's nothing but multiplying this number of cells. So what I'll do, I'll just do this as equal to three point two into Number of cells in parallel. Oh, sorry. Control Z and this. I'll get this 115. Now, similarly, when I talk about this, this will be equal to 26 into 5. 130. That's what I'm getting now. Okay. This is what my voltage rating will be coming around 316 and 318.2. Okay. Now, Mass of pack. I talk about mass of pack. So I have to just uh, make sure that the number of cells I have. Okay. So this will be equal to total number of cells into the mass. Okay. This is in kg. Now, similarly over here equals to number of cells into mass of one cell. That will give me 166. Now volume of the pack, okay? That will be similar. We have to just know the amount of cells we have. That is 316 into volume of each cell, okay? Okay, just wait a minute. So the value is not accurate. It is 0 0.07. This will be And now we talk about over here, this will be equal to number of cells into, sorry, control V, this. Okay, this is in meter cube. Okay, so you can see, uh, what I'm getting over here is that I've taken two cells. Okay, I've finally decided my whole uh, calculations are done based on the ratings, configurations, okay? And I got that my mass of pack and mass of value is 
done over here. Okay. I got that uh, for my Panasonic cell. Mm -hmm. I'm getting number of uh, weight is around 153 kgs. And for my Coke is 166 kgs. And the volume of pack is around, uh, I guess, if I talk about in liters, it is 50 liters. And in uh, in Kokums, it is 90 liters. Okay, 92 liters, 92.5 liters. Okay. So I'll just uh, pause this and I just open a jam board. Just wait for a minute. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'll just sh uh, show you, like, I have taken a uh, Maruti Suzuki Swift. Okay. So now how I'm going to decide that where I can put my vehicle uh, battery over there because what what we have in the uh, boot is nothing but I have a space of 202 liters okay just share once again share okay is the jambo visible yes sir okay Okay. Now, when when I go to the uh, the specifications of the Swift boot, so I just designed the Swift boot. Okay, just bear with my sketching. I just this, although my sketching is really good, but as in this jam board is not very very good. Okay. I just draw a box to show the boot of the vehicle as I'm just showing in a cuboid. Okay. So I, I you just can reduce that this is the bumper of the vehicle over here. Okay. So this fit headlamp a tail lamp sorry like this. Okay. This is the bumper. the panel okay this is the inside area this is the dome where suspension is placed so this is the amount of this thing okay i just change the color yes right okay so this place this has in a dimension of 1.14 meter okay and now over here what i have is this is around 0.675 okay point six seven five meter okay and the height this okay what i'm getting is around the height of this this is my length this is my breadth and the height of the box is around uh, 470 or 430 okay this is what is advisable to be used over there okay well the height of the swift boot goes to 870 but i'm taking 430 because then we have i cannot cross the uh the uh, the passenger seat height okay so that will be very uh difficult because now here we have the parcel tray or where you call the parcel tray or anything the parcel tray is placed over here so i'm talking about placing a battery over here and beneath this is my stepney okay um uh, now i'm thinking of placing a battery over here the space over here okay uh what i say we do is that uh you might be thinking if i'm placing my battery over here then how can i be easy to access my stepney okay so we have options that uh, what sometimes that we can just make the step knee, uh like openable from the rear end, like from the bottom. Okay, like what we do that we open the boot, then we access them from here. But sometimes we have an option of that the step knee is attached over here, and you can be accessed from the bottom, like we have in uh, Innovas and all. So we can do with that. Okay, this is a very conceptual way, but this is what I'm supposing. So now I've taken my this and now I have to think of how can I reduce that. I can just make sure that. Okay. So first of all, I just add note over here. 
or cancel i just need to add some text to the text okay so swift boot is i'll just writing in 1.14 into 0 0.675 into 0 0.43 in meter okay now i talk about the cell i'm using okay so what i'll have is that i'll just talk about here i'll use the thing Okay. I'll talk about 18650. Okay, so I'll just write over here the one eight six five zero. Okay, so what we have is 18 and 65. Okay, and the combination we got was if I'm using it's 88 in series, am I right? And 35 in parallel okay let me just confirm this this was my excel sheet and i got 88 in series and 36 in parallel okay so 36 in parallel that is 36 in parallel okay this is what my combination is now uh what i know is that my cylindrical cell has a diameter of or i can say the diameter of 18.5 okay but i'm not going to use this because when we use the cells like when we have to arrange the cells like i have two cells like this in cylindrical cells we have a thing called battery holder okay it is used in i'll just show you what the battery holder looks like One eight six five zero. This is the battery holder. Okay, this is how the lithium ion cells are packed. Okay, and above this, then we place the nickel strips, and spot welding is done over here. Okay, so when you design the pack, you have to take the thickness of this uh, battery holder, and it's square, and has a dimension of twenty mm for each side. Okay. So I'm not going to use this 20 mm and I've like, if I'm calculating, if I'm taking this 88 in series, okay. If what I'm taking is that I'm just creating is 88 in series. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And this each cell has 36 cells in parallel connected. Right? So I'm having this 88 till 88. Okay. I'll just 88, 88 string over here. Okay. So that these are correlated with the battery holders like this you can get an imagination over here okay so i have to take that 88 so how would i do is i'll just multiply to get if i can have a single array single array mean that all there are present by one layer that 88 uh 30 uh 36 cells connected in parallel form one string or i can say 88 connected uh, one cell and they create in parallel so i'm just doing that my 36 cells are connected in uh, par in parallel okay then i have different strings of this cells in parallel of number of 88 connected together okay so that will be making my 88 88 and this will be around 35 so my this will be my 88 columns and the rows will be having 35 cells 36 cells okay so now if i have 88 and that uh this cell holder one damage is 20 okay 20 so if i multiply this so what i'm getting is 88 into 20 when i do this so i'm getting 88 into 20 so i'm getting is one point i'm just writing this in uh i just use this in. i'm just writing this okay let's, let's, i'm getting is 180 eight sorry 1760 mm 
that is giving me the length of this is around going to 1.76. So that, that is of no use. I cannot use this because this is exceeding my what value space I have. So you might say that this is failed. No, but I have another option. What I can do is I can just do this in half. Okay. What I can do is I can make a battery pack of uh, two battery packs. Okay. And they have combination of 44 S and 36 P. Okay. If, oh, I have to also check this 36 one. Okay. We're talking about 36. 36 into 20. I get this will be exceeding all again also into 20. This is going 720. Okay. This is also going 720. Okay. So now I have to make, uh, I have to make sure now this is also not uh, uh, fixing my this requirement. It is exceeding over here. So I cannot have a single array of this. Okay. So now what I can do is I can make like uh, two battery packs, okay, or four battery packs, okay, and this having a rating of 44s and 18p, okay, pack of this four, okay, four battery packs of 44s and 18p, okay. So if I have this 18, so 18 20 will give me around 360. I'm just giving you, you can do like you can have three or something like that, but I'm just taking four, okay. And this 44 will give me half 44 into 20. Okay. This will give me half of this will be result will be 880. Okay. Now what box size I'm getting is I'll just draw over here. Okay. This I'm getting is 880. And this what I'm getting is one battery pack sizes. This I'm getting is uh, 360. Okay. And now the height, the height is 65. Okay. The height of one cell is 65 and considering a buffer of these two holders. Okay. Which are placed over there. 65, 65 plus 40. Okay. So I just take this up 120. For more space, so 120. Okay, so I'm getting the space as 120. Okay, so 120 is the height of this battery pack. So this one battery pack of 44 S and 18 P. Okay, I'm getting this side, which is under my boot space. Okay, 120, and now limit of 430. 430 or 480. So even if I go up upwards, my battery bag will be allowable to have the space to be filled over here. So what I'm going to do is to make sure I get the similar rating, I'll connect. I'll just move over here. I have taken this. Okay, I'll just write text over here. I've taken the battery chip bag equals to 44 S and 18 P. Okay. So I'll just connect two in parallel and two in series. Okay. Two in parallel and two in series. So when I connect these first two, okay, I'll just show when I connect these first two, so my resultant will be. 44 S and as they are connected in a uh, parallel. So my, this will add up will be, this will be 36 P. Okay. And now finally we're going to get these two in series. So my voltage, my cells will be added over here. Okay. So it will be 88 S into 36 P. So I'll get my final, final configuration and my battery back is fixed over there. So by using this, Four packs of this, if I add over there, kind of two in parallel, two in series, I'll get my whole battery pack. And there is no space issue. Okay. Now, I'll talk about the Kokum cell. Okay. I'll just, I'll just draw.
Okay, what I got was has a 1.14 meter. This is, is around 0.675. And this what I'm getting is the height is 430. Now in the coquim, what I have, what I reduced was that five number of cells in parallel and 86 number of cells in series. Okay. So I talk about the coquim cell. So the coquim cell actually looks like this. Okay, it has, it is, this is around, this is around uh, 275 mm to 75 mm of length. This is around 99 mm. And the thickness of the cell, okay, the thickness of the cell, this thickness is around 8 mm. Okay, this is what the prismatic cell looks, uh, power cell looks like, okay. Now I have to configure like how can I do this? Okay. So what I can do is I can arrange uh, I have to first make a module. Okay. So I have to first make a module of uh, five kite in parallel. Okay. So when I create this five in parallel, so I have a space of around 675 over here. So what I'll do is I'll make a module of this shape like this. Okay. One. Two, three, four. So this is five. Okay. And this. Okay. So this one is around 99. Okay. 99 mm. And uh, so this all will give me around 500 mm of space. And that 100 or 150 mm is giving buffer for the or the wire harnessing and DMS have to get place for the battery case. Okay. So 99 mm over here. And this will give me around. 275 of this 275 mm of space over here okay so even if i go with okay so if i go with this so uh like this will this space i will have the five over here like five and this one two three and five okay like this okay now it's a 1.14 now I have to keep 275, okay? Two, I, I want to see the how, how much of this layer or I can string, I can keep in uh, one single layer, okay? So that will give me, uh, just divide 1140, like this is the length of the face available, divide by 275, okay? So what I'm getting is around four. So connect these four. So I can have uh, one module of five cells created in, Parallel, okay, and I can keep this as four in one layer. Okay, so this is very ugly looking pouch cell. I know. This so is what I can do. I'm just not taking much of your time. I know it's been a very long session. You have to calibrate also. This is what I'm getting. Okay, this is what I'm getting. Uh, one first module, second module, third module, and fourth module. Okay, so this is all one is a complete module. This is one module. This is one module. This is the third module. And this is fourth module. They are going in series. Okay. So module, this, it has cells created in parallel. And this is giving me a range of 130 ampere hour. Okay. And then I've created these all into series. Okay. So this is uh, this one module. Uh, this one module of this has 1.3 and 3.7 voltage. Why? Because this is uh, created, uh, this is created in parallel. Okay, so the voltage won't add up. So the voltage will remain constant throughout. That's why the one one module has a voltage rating of 3.7 volt, and but the ampere rating is 130 h. And this will be similar for all the packages, but as they created in series. So if I connect these two, okay, so the resultant voltage will be around uh, 7.4. Similarly, if I go over, I just I created the third one, so that will be give me around. This will be eleven point one. 
okay can i take the fourth one so that's will have so i get four okay now what i have to do i have to connect uh sorry i have 86 over here okay 86 so So I have to place 21 layers like this. Okay, so what I have to do is now one one is thickness of 8 mm. I'll just take 8 mm. I just supposing 8 mm. Okay. So I'll just take a buffer of twice 16 mm. Okay, 16 or 15 mm. Or I just take 20 mm. Okay, because I have to make sure the cells are not uh, placed one upon each other. There's uh, the buzz bar connected properly uh, and the this or I'll just take 20 mm thickness of here of this module 20 mm okay and now to make sure that i have 86 cells connected in, in series okay and i can see that only in one layer one layer of this one layer i can have four okay so i have to make sure that the layers should have so the layer what i'll be getting will be uh 21 into 4 will be 84 as 21 into 4 okay equals to 84 and I'm left with two. I have to add two more cells in two more modules. So I just have 84 cells, uh, 21 layers of four modules connected each other in, in series and then two more modules that are on the top, they're connected in series, then connected to the whole module. So that's how it looked like. So if I've taken 21, so 21 into 20, okay, that will give me around 420 plus one more 20 that will give me 440 so it is somehow really uh, nearly about this value so i can use this battery space like what i've taken is that i have to i'll just make it more clearer okay so yeah nothing but what i have to do is i have to this is one in this similarly we have in this one module this is one module of three point seven volt and one thirty h it has five cells just like you how your uh Laptop laptop battery pack looks like. Have you seen the laptop battery pack? Uh, laptop battery. It is actually of consists of three or four lithium ion cells, but it looks in behind as in like that. Connected in series or parallel combination. Okay. So uh, like this. Put it over here. About this. Again, I have. this okay. and again i'll just So these all are connected in series, okay? One through another, okay? So we'll get your one of this will be, sorry, this is uh, taking five over here. This all connected in series, okay? And this will give me the resultant as uh, one part in one layer, one layer will give me 14.8 voltage and 130 h. Okay, this is one layer. Okay, this is my top view, and the front view or side will look like, like this once. One this layer, okay, this is very, very not okay, just leave it. One 
the top view look like this this is this is the leave it this is what my uh the top front will look like okay one single layer of having the thickness as 20 mm okay or one pouch sir and then i'll having array of this okay how 14.8 volt because i have 3.7 volt okay over here this battery this model has 3.7 volt as because i've taken five cells connected them in parallel so i get 138 resulted now i have similarly this 3.7 over here 3.7 over here and 3.7 over here okay so these all will be added okay because i've connected them in series so when you connect battery in series the voltage sums up okay so when you multiply 3.7 into 4 okay so you'll get this 14.8 volt. That's what you get. Okay. So similarly, I got 20 mm and I required this 14. So my single uh, array, it has 14.8 volt. Now, when I make sure that I have 21 arrays of this, I'll get my resulting voltage around this 318 voltage. So you have got an idea of how like, it is a bit complex, but just to understand how the dimension can play, uh, play a role, the uh, cylindrical was much easier. You have to just create two battery packs, four battery packs, two in, in parallel, two series, and you get the required combination. Just have to make sure what one battery pack should have combination. But if you need, uh, think about retrofitting a vehicle with pouch cells, you have to make sure the space available. Okay. That's why I have to uh, make sure these what how you align these pouch cells in proper manner as because there were i was had a bigger space consideration still i've gotten the space of this much okay so from this i can place my two cells in a different manner okay so at the end what i what i'm just telling you is that i just gave you a sheet over here which i told you that 90 liters of capacity over here this capacity over here okay but you can see over here when i just plan the whole overall look okay if i sorry if i plan this so uh what i did is five like this is 270 if i calculate the volume okay if i calculate the volume of the pouch cell okay of pouch okay if i calculate the volume of pouch so what i get is So I got was 0.239, okay, 0.239 meter cube for the pouch cells, okay. And what I got over here was uh, 92 meter cube, uh, sorry, 92 liters. And what I got over here is 239 uh, liters or 0.239 meter cube. So you can see that how much difference I can see. If I have planned that if I have 92, uh, 92 liter space or 0 0.92 meter cube of space, I can plan the battery. But when I planned when I putting my vehicle, what space I uh, put over there was around 239 meter cube or 239 liters. That's why when you, uh, the space which you show about over here is not very practical. You have to see that what amount of uh, cell combinations and the uh, space available in your vehicle because if, if i didn't know about this uh sorry if i go over this if i had no idea regarding this space which i have over here i couldn't have planned my whole battery pack 
uh, mounting or placing over there. So I will just share the sheets and even the Jamboard if you want. And then you can try with yourself or those who will be next working on the project one that how in your own vehicles, which uh, many teams have used this, but I was make sure that someone comes up with this idea, but nobody didn't. No worry. That's why I just made this uh, session to show that how you can just when you calculate the battery, but you have to make sure that in retrofitting where exactly the space available and how will you make sure that the battery pack will be placed properly with not disturbing your actual space of the vehicle. Because even if you talk about uh, placing the battery in the, you can make the seats removed and all. that's all hypothetical and that's very unethical. You have to make sure that you're placing the battery, just how you place your CNG cylinder nowadays. Okay. So, uh, thank you. I may show that if you have any doubts, please ask me. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask in pouch cell, uh, there is some kind of swelling effect also. So what will be the means, uh, uh, means in MM, how much we are considering for that? We need to, okay. uh, means. That's why, uh, the eight MM is the thickness of the cell. That's why key 20 MM, the, uh, swelling is around more, not more than five ml, but I've taken 20 ml because I have to make sure that the swelling is, uh, taken about the bus bars and all, but does not goes above them. We have a casing for it, for the pouch cell. Similarly, like we have in our, uh, phone cell battery, they are also pouch cells. So for that, uh, you haven't seen that sometimes in the Micromax phones, which we used to have earlier, the battery gets swollen off, swollen. So that you see that it might gain out four to five ml, not more than that. Similarly in the power cell, it doesn't, in, when you talk about cocum cells, so they are very expensive and they make sure that the, even the swelling is not very practical available over there. And if swelling happens, then these are, uh, from the cheap Chinese cells, which we bought off. Okay. So when you talk about cocum cells, the swelling is not more than enough. And we have to make thermal management also that even though if we talk about swelling, the swelling is actually, uh, damaged the cell and cell should be removed. Okay. So I've taken a buffer of 20 mm because it, 8 mm was a thickness, but I've taken 20 mm. So that is what I've been taking over here. Okay. Thank sir, you, sir. Uh, sir, sir, what do we consider about the heat transfer means uh, in which uh, in cylindrical, it would be better or in pouch cells, it would be better. Means okay. In when we talk about, so we have to focus on, like, I've not talked about the thermal management because we'll take one more lecture, but. Uh, that is very short, uh, another topic. When I talk about this in retrofitting, so we have to make sure that what amount of, uh, we are using, it is a forced, uh, air conviction or it is a liquid cooling method. Okay. So if we talk about, it only depends upon like, uh, how you're managing, do we have water plates over there? Do we have some space where the liquid, it is, uh, uh, directly contacted. It is by means of convection or conduction. Okay. So it does not depend upon the cell. It depends on the way you're managing the thermal management of the cell. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Any other questions or else we will go to the presentation two, where Supratim will talk about, you know, some calculations about motor and motor controller. Uh, Participants, any questions or should we move to the next session, which will be a short one, 10, 15 minutes. And then at the end of that, you know, we are going to talk about the problem, which the Altair students are going to take, uh, you know, the fundamental of battery pack design students, what problem, you know, you have to do, or what is that project? That is what we are going to discuss for 5 minutes at the end. So any questions? We will take the questions now on this, or we will move to the next part. Sir, are there any standards available for this battery pack uh, in assembling and all of that? Yes, yeah, there we have standards because, uh, first of all, we talk about, uh, the assembling. We have to first, uh, like I've taken the parameters of losses, the depth of discharge, the combination, we have to make sure. That some people, what they do is in like cylindrical cells, they only calculate the distance between the cell to cell. You have to make sure the nickel strip spaces, the welding you're using. Okay. The battery hold is the main concept. And when you talk about the standards or of, we have uh, make sure the standard testing, like if we have designed your one module of pouch cells, you have to test that individual, uh, pouching 
of uh, the pouch of the cell and then you start with that. So you have to make sure that uh, I have taken layers, okay? I've made it one layer. For example, I've shown over here, okay? So I have to test that one layer. It is probable. It is, uh, the test will be maintained, the electrical discharge, the short circuit and all. Then that each layer will be tested individually and then they all be placed in the proper manner. So that is how a certified retrofit bag, uh, battery bag is made. Sir, suppose we do make our own pack, then how can we register it? See, the thing is, uh, when you talk about making your own battery pack, okay, so first thing is, uh, you have to take your cells from a recognized manufacturer, okay, and then you have to have this uh, license, uh, sorry, certificate of the IP67, the lab test uh, tested uh, cells that they have been performed, the cells should have individually tested on the short circuit over charging parameters, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, when you pay, make your own battery pack, for example, if you're making a battery pack for a two wheeler, okay, that's a small battery of 1.1 kilowatt or a two kilowatt hour battery pack. Okay. So you have to, uh, do all that, uh, no load test, load test and the discharge test you have to do in a certified lab. Okay. And then you have to get certificate from any, uh, body, like from, uh, ESGC or any lab which certifies the testing of battery. You have to show the results that you have done results on it. You have to show the report that on such tests and experiments you have done, you get these results to determine that the battery pack is safe. After that, when you do that, so they give you certificate. So you are an, uh, you are tested manufacturer and now by the same parameters, you can start working on making more batteries and you can start your own business. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, uh, to be more specific, uh, you can refer standard AIS 123 part 3. Okay, this standard, this is an automotive industry standard. It specifically talks about the approval of electric proposal kit, which is intended for conversion of your IC engine vehicle to pure electric operation. So please note this AIS 123 part 3. That is the name of the standard which we are looking for. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, great. So thanks a lot, Siddharth, for a very nice and informative session. Yeah, thank you, sir. Now let us move to the next part. Uh, I request Supratim, if you are here. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, hope my screen is uh, visible. Okay, yeah, just here. Uh, is my screen visible now? Yes, it yes, is. Sir. yes, yes, sir. Yes, visible. So uh, now we are uh, going to see uh, how we can uh, select the motor parameter. Okay, for that, uh, I have developed a MATLAB script uh, to find motor power torque speed and uh, battery energy requirement uh, for EV parameters. Okay, so for this calculation, uh, we are considering uh, FUDS uh, driving cycle, uh, that is Federal Urban Driving Schedule. So here the first column represents the time and uh, the second column uh, represents uh, the speed in mile per hour for each instance of time. So like in 20 second, the speed is zero and in 21 second, the speed is three mile per hour. Uh, so uh, just so, uh, let me show the MATLAB screen. I think the screen is visible now. Uh, so, so here uh, I have considered a two wheeler electric bike uh, for which the mass is uh, 180 kg, rack coefficient is one, Frontal area is 0 0.6 meter square. Uh, rolling resistance coefficient is 0 0.015. Tire radius is 0 0.28 meter. Gear ratio is 2. Efficiency of the motor, uh, I consider it 80%. Transmission efficiency is 95%. And power requirement for exercises like uh, the lights, horn, and other things, I consider it uh, as 50 watt. So uh, here in the first line, you can see uh, here I have uh, used a XLS read function to uh, load the drive cycle data 
and then in the second line here i have uh, uh, specified that uh, in the variable t the in the drive cycle data the first column is for time and in the next line i have denoted that the second column uh, in the drive cycle uh, it is uh, the speed okay then here i have converted the speed from mile per hour to kilometer per hour and here again i have converted the speed from kilometer per hour to meter per second uh, here i have considered that uh, at time equals to uh, one second the distance covered is zero uh, meter so here here i have uh, written a simple formula to calculate the acceleration like uh, the acceleration in uh, time t equals to 1 uh, it is uh, the difference between the speed at uh, time equals to 2 minus the speed at time equals to 1 uh, here i have uh, here i have made a loop uh, starting from uh, 2 second and uh, going till uh, the drive cycle that is of 1371 second uh, to calculate the distance covered at each instance of time here i have calculated the distance for each instance of time and uh, here i have calculated the acceleration at each instance of time using this formula here i have written the general form okay so now here i have uh, calculated the total distance covered at time uh, t that is the end, uh, end time final time uh, that is the uh, time uh, that is the distance covered till t minus one second plus the uh, uh, speed of at uh, the final uh, time duration okay here i have saved the total distance in this variable here I have calculate. Here I have also saved uh, the acceleration, and here I have converted uh, the distance from meter to kilometer by dividing uh, it uh, with thousand by thousand. Here I have specified uh, figure one where I want to plot three graphs, uh, which I have given the subplot. Uh, title for subplot one uh, here these commands uh, basically represents that in figure one this three represents that there will be total three subplots or there will be total three plots and this one represents like matrix in each row there will be uh, one plot and this is the subplot position of this plot here in this uh, first subplot i have uh, plotted the time versus speed curve and here i have plotted the time versus acceleration curve here i have uh, used a function called num to str uh, basically uh, it uh, convert the numerical value into string uh, which i want to show in the title of that uh, particular plot so here i have uh, plotted the time versus acceleration and here i have plot the time versus distance here i have uh, mentioned all the variables like the mass of the vehicle the drag coefficient uh, the frontal area rolling resistance coefficient px series loss uh, air density transmission efficiency motor yeah, efficiency hello continue so prati yeah Some, someone's here so here i have uh, calculated the uh, speed of the tire uh, um, from the speed of the vehicle uh, here i have uh, divided the speed of the vehicle that is in meter per second by the uh, tire radius to get it in radian per second the tire speed then here i have calculated the motor speed in radian per second uh, to calculate it i have uh, multiplied the tire speed in rad per second with the gear ratio and then here i have uh, i want to convert the speed from rad per second to rpm or revolution per minute uh, that's why i have uh, multiplied it with 60 by 2 pi 
to calculate the force uh, forces acting on that vehicle first i have considered the forces of uh, acceleration force so that's why i have multiplied the mass and the acceleration here i have used a dot basically uh, in the whole uh, excel file the whole data are operated uh, like in a uh, in array so to make uh, element wise operation i have used this dot so uh, here i have also calculated the rolling resistance force uh, using this formula mu rr into m into g here i have calculated the aerodynamic drag force uh, by writing this formula then here i have calculated the total uh, traction force considering these three forces uh, i have considered that there will be no gradient as uh, this whole drive cycle in zero gradient so i have uh, added these three forces so next here i have calculated the torque of that uh, tire or the wheel so to calculate this i have uh, multiplied the traction force with uh, the uh, tire radius and then i have calculated the motor of uh, torque of the motor for that i have multi i have divided the tire uh, torque uh, with the multiplication of gear ratio and transmission efficiency and then here i have calculated the motor power for that i have multiplied the motor speed in uh, that is in rad per second with the torque of that motor and then in the figure 2 again i have subplotted three plots so basically uh, the first subplot is for time versus motor power uh, second subplot is time versus motor speed and the third uh, subplot is time versus motor torque basically this subplot concept will be more clear when i will run this uh, whole program so here i have uh, calculated the total power required where i have considered the motor power divided by the motor efficiency and the accessories uh, power which is uh, i have considered 50 watt uh, in the uh, here for that energy requirement i have considered at time equals to 1 uh, one, one second the energy required is zero so i have used a loop uh, which again starts from time equals to 2 and uh, went till the uh, whole drive cycle at, uh, final time to calculate the energy and then uh, the calculated energy will be in joule so i have converted it into watt kilowatt so basically the relation between joule and watt hour is 1 joule equals to 0.0002778 watt hour so finally in the figure 3 i have plotted the uh, time versus energy plotted here i have given the title total energy consumed and i have converted the numerical value of that total energy consumed that is the max energy consumed uh, using the num to str uh, function so if i run this so we can see in this figure 1 uh, it is showing the max velocity velocity uh, in that drive cycle in that fuds drive cycle it is like 91.2303 km per hour and the max acceleration uh, uh, among the whole uh, among uh, in the whole uh, drive cycle the max acceleration is 1.609 m per second and the total distance covered or the total distance traveled in this whole drive cycle it is 11.9877 km it is basically subplots in the figure 1 i have subplotted previously i have showed i have subplotted three plots uh, this is the three plots and then in the figure 2 it is basically more important to select the motor parameters uh, for a vehicle so here you can see the max power or the maximum power required that is 8293.6456 watt or uh, nearly equals to 8.3 kilowatt 
it is the maximum motor power uh, required for this particular vehicle uh, for this drive cycle. And here I have uh, here you can see the max speed that is 1728 RPM. And the max torque uh, which uh, need to be produced by the motor is 49.9008 or nearly about, about to 50 Newton meter. And finally, in the figure three, we can see that the total energy consumed that is uh, through the uh, after the whole drive cycle, it is 0.47213 kilowatt hour, or we can say 472 uh, watt hour. So if I uh, calculate the standard consumption, uh, so then we have to divide it this total energy consumed that is. 472 watt hour uh, by the total distance covered that is i think uh, 11.9877 kilometer so if i divide 472 divided by 1 1.9877 so the standard consumption will be around 39.37 watt hour per kilometer for this vehicle uh, for this drive cycle so from here we can uh, get that to select a motor we can uh, we should consider the maximum uh, torque and maximum power uh, so now i quickly move to the next part of this presentation uh, which is the project part uh, for the uh, fundamental of battery pack design course uh, can you put it in full screen mode, Suprati? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And uh, please understand, participants, the only reason why you know we are showing you this MATLAB script is because we are very comfortable with Simulink. But you know, I would want, I would really want, you know, some of you to try writing such programs in MATLAB script as well. Okay, that will give you a very clear understanding of you know how to plot the graphs, how to look at the graphs and how to understand it basically. So that was the whole idea. And now this is the project, which you know we want you to do for the fundamental of battery pack design, Altair program. So it's a very, you know, open problem. Okay, maybe Supratim, continue. Yes, sir. So uh, basically in this project, uh, students have to design a battery pack and consider the maximum charging rate uh, up to 60 ampere and they have to perform a steady state analysis at different charging rate. Uh, basically, the maximum charging rate should be 60 ampere and they have to vary uh, from 0 to 60 and have to observe the different temperature profile of that battery pack. So uh, for that battery pack, they can uh, consider uh, these uh, battery packs for Ather 450X that, uh, that is 2.7 kilowatt hour or for the revolt RV400 that is uh, 3.2 kilowatt hour and budget Chetak it is uh, 3 kilowatt hour and so on. Or they can consider any other battery pack of any other vehicle and they can do it in any software they want that they are comfortable with. So basically this uh, is the project. So basically uh, the, the thing is we want you to design a battery pack and apply whatever fundamental knowledge you have acquired. Okay, during you know, listening to the lectures which were offered by DIY Guru, plus whatever you have learned from Altair. If you are comfortable with OptiStruct, you know, you can do this analysis in OptiStruct as well. If you are from electrical background, if you are comfortable doing this in MATLAB or Simulink, you can do it in MATLAB and Simulink. Or if you are comfortable with SOLIDWORKS, ANSYS. So, you know, we, we are keeping options open. The only thing is we want you to apply whatever knowledge you have gained in last three weeks to you know, we want you to select a battery pack just as Siddharth showed you, uh, you know, for a cylindrical and a pouch. Maybe you, you can do the calculation and, you know, you can apply whatever knowledge you have learned, but we want to see the temperature profile for this particular charging rate is what the problem is. So any questions you can please ask. Or, you know, maybe go through the Thanks, problem. Sir. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can also contact Supratim later. Yeah, tell me. Yes, sir. So, as far as the calculation is concerned, like, uh, is it possible to show all the calculations uh, without using the MATLAB? 
for the better yes. understanding. Yes, for the yes. Yeah, it is possible using uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel. It is possible. Or you yeah, can actually, uh, yeah. do it using Simulink. No, actually, actually, I'm asking for the uh, motor calculation. Sorry. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, I, uh, then I will try to uh, show you this uh, in the upcoming session. Yeah, thank you. Motor calculation, uh, can you please clearly, uh, you know, put your problem so that, you know, we understand it very clearly so that we can, you know, uh, answer your question in a better way, Srikant. Yeah, sure. So, so as as he showed, like uh, uh, Supratim showed, for the particular vehicle, the power, this much power is needed, the power ratings and current ratings and all. So okay. those kind of uh, calculations can be shown um, in, uh, without using any math lab. So uh, are you talking about mind. some hand calculations or something? Like yes, sir, exactly. Yes. Sir. Okay, maybe we'll try uh, in the next lecture. Okay. Uh, but hand calculations is going to take a lot of time, but still, you know, we will try uh, showing you some hand calculations. Thank you. So, hello, sir. Uh, can you please again uh, explain related to the project work means uh, perform a steady state analysis at different charging rate. Uh, what we need to do in particularly that. See, basically, whenever we charge a battery. Okay, using your standard charger or, you know, fast charger or DC fast charger or AC charger. So we. We do charge the battery using some amperage, right? So, depending on whatever battery pack you have designed, okay, and you have selected, and if you apply a particular current, a charging current, okay, of say, for example, up to 60 ampere hours, how the temperature profile of a battery pack looks like. So, there was one question uh, when, uh, you know, Siddharth was showing. Uh, someone asked that, you know, which batteries perform well when it comes to heat transfer thing. So this particular, uh, if you do this project, the answer, you will get the answer to this particular question. The question which was asked. Uh, I hope you are getting my point. So when we design a battery pack, if you see the, the cells which are, you know, nearer to uh, or the cells which are outside. Right. May get a good cooling effect. So, depending yes, on whether yes. you are going for liquid cooling or, you know, uh, uh, your air cooling or something like that, but cells which are there inside the battery pack, maybe the entire thing, or if you are going for, you know, air cooling kind of a thing, the air might not reach the inside cells. So, that is where, you know, we want to observe how the temperature profile of a battery pack looks like. It's a very small project. Again, I'm saying we just want you to apply just to check whether you understood how to design a battery pack. Okay, and you understood how to model the battery pack using a software and apply certain values okay, just to check the temperature profile. That is the only thing. It's a very minor project as I'm saying, but it will help you improve your understanding. That is the whole point here. I hope everyone got the problem. Go through the problem, sit back, you know, think about it. If you get any doubts, you can contact Supratim. Supratim. Thank you, sir. Sir, as well yeah. as I would like to request uh, Supratim, sir, that uh, can they uh, uh, share the motor motor for the power train, whichever they have shown in MATLAB. Okay, okay, I will uh, share. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, sir I can yes. explain them in short the project. What they? Yeah, sure, sure. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so uh, for those who are new with the software, the basic thing we do is just go design a battery cell. Okay. And in the input conditions are uh, the topics which have covered in the battery pack. We are talking about joule heating. Okay. So you know about the current charging rate is given of 60 ampere hour. Just take about what is the uh, joule heating will act on this uh, cell. Search for the material of the cell which you're using. What is the case material? And then add the ambient conditions and see that what is the uh, cell temperature acting on it. From that you get the cell temperature. And have we in the, in the uh, course of the battery pack modeling. We have talked about how to calculate the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So let's evaluate that. Sir is asking for the temperature profile, which is nothing but what is the temperature acting on the way uh, on the cell when you have given a 60 ampere of charge. Okay. So you have to calculate that. Yes. And again, uh, uh, we, we have uh, kept the problem open ended. You can improvise on it. Yeah. Go Hello, ahead. sir. Uh, for the temperature profile, do we need to uh, mean show a model or uh, it should be related like means uh, it should be air cooled, liquid cool or forced or uh, pre-convection? 
it all depends on what temperature you are getting. Yes, so sir. We, but uh, we, do we need yeah. to prove uh, with the software or uh, or just with the calculations only? Maybe. See, you will have to support your justification with whatever temperatures you are getting. Just support your answer with what kind of cooling is required. We are okay. not expecting you know you to put all the cooling jackets and everything, but depending on you know where the temperature profile is going, you can suggest a suitable you know uh, cooling method, which is you know which is required for that okay. particular thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. And uh, you, you know if you have any doubts, uh, you know please contact Supratim on this. Okay. Or even Siddharth. Siddharth, is it fine? If they contact you. Yeah, okay, maybe he's, he, he has left, but yes, you can definitely contact Supratim on that. And yeah, you know, so that is all what we had, uh, you know, with reference to the session. But before winding up, uh, is there anyone from team three? Uh, regarding the project update. Yes, sir, this is Amol from team 3, sir. Yes, Amol, tell me. Uh, are you the same person the Ayush was talking about? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Okay, so uh, maybe you can have a word with, uh, you know, Siddharth and just figure out, uh, you know, how, uh, so what is the status of the project? Is it over? You are still doing it? Uh, no, sir, I am still doing it. Okay. Uh, uh, no one responding, sir. Uh, from my team number. Okay. All right. Maybe uh, you know, take one more week of time. Uh, you know, it is absolutely fine. But you know, we we want you to complete the project and move to phase two. I hope you understand that. Okay. Okay. So okay, sir. No problem. Yeah, sir. I will complete it. Okay. So whatever your problem is, you know, just uh, clearly speak to your mentor and we can figure it out because we want, we don't want you to suffer because of, you know, all the other people who are not. I hope you got my point, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so whatever is there from your end, please see to it that discuss with your mentor and maybe we can figure out how you can proceed to phase two. Okay, okay sir. I will complete it. Uh, I will complete my first project and then uh, I will start. Uh, second project. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Great. I think, guys, uh, are there any other questions? Someone who is from November batch, uh, any queries, any doubts uh, before we wind up the session? Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. We have, uh, I am from uh, October batch. Mm -hmm. So, when will we start our minor project, sir? Uh, maybe as uh, Ayush said that at least two months of content, uh, you know, we require you to complete. Uh, you're from which background, Ajay? Um, I'm from, sir, mechanical. Okay, you're from mechanical. So, you, you know, if you feel you can start with the project, maybe, uh, you know, we are going to float uh, some things related to project very soon. If you think okay. you can go with project one, you can please nominate yourself for that. Yes, sir, because uh, the after, for completing two months, the mm -hmm. Uh, 10 days are remaining, sir. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, very soon as you know, this first batch is going to go to major project. We are going to float, you know, some form regarding the minor project as well. So those who are interested can, you know, nominate yourself, but please see to it that, you know, as we have come across this batch one, that people are nominating themselves and then they are not working on the project. So, you know, we request that if you are nominating yourself, please see to it that complete the work, whatever you are undertaking. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, any other questions related to maybe the EV Nano doing the program uh, from November batch, October batch, if you are from Altair, Altair student, uh, you know, taking fundamental of battery pack design course, any questions? Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, actually, uh, some questions has been asked in the, uh, in the EV nano degree course mm -hmm. uh, related to electric mobility, course, but I did not get the answers till now. Uh, which questions are you talking about, Sandeep? Uh, in the EV nano degree course, uh, in the electric mobility course, I have added some questions in the okay. post question option. So, but I did not receive the answers till now. Uh, it was uh, around the month. 
Okay, okay, it's posted there. Maybe we will. Go yeah, through. I have posted it and uh, I got a, even a mail also, but I uh, did not get the answers. Uh, no problem. We'll we'll go through it. Okay, we'll we'll go okay. through it. If you don't get the answer, I are you on the EV Nano degree program group, the WhatsApp group? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if it is possible for you to message me directly, I'll get the answers to you in a minute. You know, in a moment. okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Maybe, thank you. maybe we have not gone through uh, the the course. Uh, we have not gone yet there. But you know, if you can put it to me directly, I can answer it to you immediately. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So, sir. Yes. Sir, I am from Artair Group. Mm -hmm. My name is Gaurav, sir. Yes, Gaurav. Sir, uh, actually, I was new for uh, MATLAB. Mm -hmm. uh, can we get a tutorial or uh, the file of programming for battery pack model? Battery. Okay, maybe for that, uh, Gaurav, since you are new to MATLAB, maybe uh, would, what I would suggest is. You can learn MATLAB on your own, or maybe you can get enrolled into the EV Nano degree program. Uh, we can share, you know, whatever file was shown to you today. We are going to share it with you. If you can work it with that, you know, I'll be more than happy. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah, Thank but it, it was regarding the minor project that we are discussing. So in this technical sessions, you know, we we try to give you a flavor of everything. So you know, do hand uh, hand tutorials, Excel, you know, MATLAB, Simulink. So we want you to undertake all these things in order to complete your project. And that is why, you know, we were going through all these MATLAB scripts and, you know, the, the Siddharth showed you how to retrofit a vehicle and all that. So I hope you understand. So we will share whatever uh, it's possible from our end, we will share with you. Okay, but teaching MATLAB from, you know, right from the basics is going to be difficult, but we will share the file with you. Just, you know, you can see how you can cope up with that. Yes, sir. Only script will be helpful. Okay, okay. All right, thank we'll you. Do that. Yes. All right. So I think uh, there are no more questions. So I think we can wind up uh, this session. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for patiently listening. Again, as I'm saying, if you have any doubts related to the project, the small project for Altair Group on fundamental of battery pack design, please get in touch with Suprati. Okay, he is going to be your mentor for that particular project. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Have a good thank, you, sir. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Praveen, are you still here? I think. Praveen? Okay, all right. Thank you. Yes, Praveen. Uh, did you had any question? So I, I think you said you joined on 16th of November. Do you have any particular question you can ask? Okay, uh, let me let me uh, ask you this, Praveen, if you are here. Uh, did you join the induction program? Okay, so maybe uh, Ayush is going to have one more session on Wednesday. Uh, okay, Ayush sir is going to have one more session on Wednesday. Please join that. Maybe you will get some more details regarding, you know, how to start with the course. Okay, if you go back to the chat box, I think you will get an order in which you can start doing the course. If you go back to the chat, you will see that Ayush has posted the sequence on how to take the program. So, which background are you from, Praveen? Are you from electrical or mechanical or any other background apart from that? Okay, you're from electrical. So I think uh, the the the, uh, the message which Ayush had put, and even I had put some days back in the EV Nano degree group. You can start with fundamental of automobile engineering course to begin with. Okay, since you are from electrical background. 
so that you can get your fundamentals clear and then you can you know, continue with the second course so at least begin with fundamental of automobile engineering that is what i can tell you today on wednesday ayush is going to have one more session please join that session maybe you will understand it in a more better way i hope i answered your question praveen at least you got some idea how to begin with you can start with fundamental of automobile engineering okay to begin with yeah thank you yes thank you guys thank you